Hello, Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. It's Friday afternoon here in the Eastern Time Zone of the USA. It's time for the weekend special. It's 20 Zulu and uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, July 23rd, 2021. And uh, today we're going to continue talking about the antenna project here at K3LR. And I'm going to show you some additional slides. Um, from the antenna build that is going on here. And um, so uh, one, of the, one of the projects that we're working on this summer at K3LR is uh, we have an antenna that uh, it's actually a nine element uh, 10 meter Yagi uh, that is up on the 40 meter tower. And we use that on the second station for 10 meters here. And uh, it's got a 60 foot long boom and that boom has been beaten around in the wind for many years and it's time to replace that antenna. Um, so it's just, uh, it is uh, in a very hostile environment um, and it's up high and it just gets beat up by the wind. And so this is the new, this is eight elements on a 48 foot boom. Uh, this is a three inch boom and uh, the, the, the boom uh, we sell a, a boom kit, actually, that is a 48-foot um, boom that's made out of two 24-foot pieces of 3-inch uh, outside diameter tubing. And then there's a splice piece that is about uh, 2.875 outside. And that uh, splice piece is what connects the two pieces of boom together. And here you can see the element plates mounted on the boom. And... Uh, so we take and uh, this is uh, Timmy uh, from the uh, tower company and he's leveling these uh, glass epoxy plates that we use. And uh, these plates are typically uh, a stock item uh, for us at DX Engineering. We have them by various bands like six meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters, et cetera. Um, and you can see the centering line there. And the, these are the DX Engineering 300B uh, saddle clamps and uh, all stainless steel. And um, so this is on the director, last director end of the boom. And you, you can see here that the aluminum oxide has been taken off where the clamps go. There's some uh, JetLube SS30 there. It's also uh, used not only as an anti-corrosion but it's also used um, as anti-seize. And then you can see the, uh, the three inch boom cap on the end there. And uh, here's another shot of that three inch boom cap. This is actually on the reflector end. Um, and uh, down at the bottom here is a small hole that has been cut. And that is very important because you need to let water out. Water will get in the boom. Uh, there's air in the boom. The air will con uh, condensate and there will be water in there. And so you need to make sure that the water can get out of the boom. Otherwise, it could be a whole host of problems. But this is the three inch uh, boom cap on the ends of the uh, boom. And I do not put uh, any element caps on the ends of the half inch tips because uh, we want water to get out. And uh, it would be um, you know, it's just such a small diameter that you really don't uh, have to worry about anything getting in there. Ma most antenna manufacturers include element uh, caps, and I just don't use them. I, I think it's you've got to get the water out of there. So this plate here, this is what we call the boom uh, to uh, boom riser uh, support plate. And uh, that two inch piece there, we're, uh, we're going to make that four feet long and that will become the uh, support, the overhead boom truss. And so um, now the uh, elements are being put on the plates and you can see this, uh, the center of the element is uh, five eighths of an inch and then the tips are half inch long uh, for 10 meters here. But uh, you can see this is the boom riser all assembled. 
Um, so there's a three inch to two inch plate at the boom and then a two inch plate at the top of the riser with a with a cap because we do want to try to keep some water out of there but it's not you know it, it would just roll out but uh, you might as well put a cap there and then uh, you see the turnbuckles that hold up uh, the boom support system and here's another shot of that uh, DX engineering plate using uh, the 200 B uh, saddle clamps and then uh, the turnbuckles go right through the plate and then on the other end of the Philly strand, this is the eye bolt that goes through the boom. We actually drill through the boom and put uh, an eye bolt there. You need to have a thimble. Anytime you use Philly strand, you must have thimbles. And then uh, we don't really want uh, the uh, a preform here because the preform would um, could add noise. It's three feet of uh, of uh, uh, steel cable so uh, we use philly strand the whole way <clears throat> and then uh, use the uh, crosby clamps to attach the philly strand this philly strand is way overrated for this this is 6700i and then uh, this is uh, pretty much the assembled uh, antenna and all the plates have been leveled and uh, all the elements have been attached and you can see the overhead boom uh, support looking straight down. So we're on the reflector end and looking out, we have a reflector, the driven element, and then six directors. And uh, this creates a little bit over 14 dB of gain over a dipole. And uh, so getting the feed line ready, this is DX Engineering RG213. Notice the yellow... Uh, sleeve there that means it's a DX engineering cable. This is actually a custom cable where we have put uh, 40 number 31 ferrite beads over the end of this cable and you can see here's here's where the uh, heat shrink and then we also put three wraps of 88 tape on top of the heat shrink to protect it from the UV and that's uh, scotch 88 tape and then you see the uh, Amphenol 83 1SP uh, PL259 connector. And here is the driven element plate when it was first uh, put on. Notice there are uh, four U bolts where the parasitics have two uh, for the elements. And now here is the, the parasit. This is the driven element. And it's split in the middle. That's a one inch gap there. And there are two attachment bolts, so it's just like a dipole. And uh, this is an optimized wideband antenna. So, uh, and then we double up on the small saddle clamps to hold the dot six two five tubing. And then uh, here we attach the feed point connector. It's a DX Engineering product uh, designed by WHWWV. And uh, you see the very short leads that go from the feed point connector to the uh, studs for the driven element. And uh, and then the PL259 from the bead choke uh, then attaches to the feed point connector. And then we have uh, standoffs to keep the as much of the choke as possible about four inches off of the uh, uh, boom, and that is to preserve the highest common mode impedance that we have uh, from these 40 ferrite beads. And here you can see the, uh, the standoffs. All of this is available at DX Engineering. So uh, just wanted to show you a couple of things uh, relating to the uh, what we're doing uh, concerning um, the, uh, the antenna build here at K3LR. And... Uh, so let's see if we have any questions in the chat room. Let's see who's uh, here today. We've got uh, Henrik, Oscar Zulu One Delta Whiskey X-Ray is on from Denmark. And Steve, November 8 Tango Uniform Whiskey. And uh, Kilo Delta Two Sierra X-Ray Delta. Alpha Golf 7 X-Ray Hotel. And uh, major thunderstorms down in Florida. Alpha Alpha Zero Whiskey X-Ray, Andy. And uh, we have uh, 
November 3 Yankee Alpha Zulu is on. And uh, Dawn says, hi, Tim. I have my 40-year-old tri-bander down for maintenance. And the hole in the boom caps is a nice tip. So uh, very timely. That's from Whiskey Juliet 3 United. And Echo Alpha 5 Kilo Alpha. And uh, Brian says, how do you prevent birds or squirrels from filling up the boom? Well, the, the end caps are there. Uh, they're, they're, I showed you the three inch end cap with just a little hole so that uh, water can get out. But that's how you, you keep the birds out. And uh, hello from Kilo Bravo 8, Bravo Kilo Alpha. And uh, Joe says, what is the advantage of having the elements insulated from the boom? Well, obviously, you have to have the driven element insulated. Um, but I, I can control the interaction of the boom uh, with the element better with it being insulated. Um, actually, W3LPL came up with a correction factor that we use because there, there is influence of the boom on the parasitic elements. But um, we're able to model that, and I have a much better handle when the elements are insulated. Um, you, as you point out, Joe, um, there are many antenna manufacturers that do not insulate the elements from the boom. Uh, but this is a home brew antenna, and so I get to brew it. Uh, Daniel, WA4, Mike, Oscar, Mike. Hello, Tim. The boom is as long as my lot is wide. Well, then it would fit. <laughs> and uh, nice to have you on, Dan. Uh, Sugar Juliet 2 Whiskey from Sweden. And... Uh, there's uh, November Papa 4 Golf, who is Otis, who is one of the 10-meter operators here at K3LR. And so he'll have uh, a brand new antenna to, to try out. That is, the, uh, we, that is the number eight antenna here on 10 meters. So we have seven Yaggies already in the air. And uh, when this goes up, we'll have eight 10-meter Yaggies in the air. And Dino is on, Kilo Lima Zero Sierra. And Toby, Kilo Lima Sierra Sierra. And Andy says, my wire antennas are stable, but the 9BTV 40-meter section is all over the place with SWR. Well, you'll, uh, you'll have to do some maintenance because it, it shouldn't be all over the place with that SWR. That's for sure. And Carlos is on. Tango India 2, Charlie, Charlie. And uh, our friend uh, Scotty, WK3N, never sleeps. And uh, so says, quite interesting. And a good day from Victor Echo 5, Juliet Hotel November from Saskatchewan. And so uh, nice to have you on, John. And uh, from Kuwait, Hamad, 9 Kilo 2 Hotel November. Nice to have you on, Hamad. And Hamad, uh, you might try 20 meters in the evenings. Uh, we've been having good luck uh, into that area of the uh, world, and we'll be on tonight. And... Uh, Oscar Norway for Mike Delta Whiskey from Belgium is on. Nice to have you on, Mark. So we just wanted to keep everybody updated with the antenna projects. We're, we're going to be doing some things with the um, high Z verticals for uh, the receive array on 80 and 160. We're going to be rebuilding a four square and an eight circle here. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. And uh, so, it, and as we progress with the, uh, the 10 meter Yagi project, and we're going to be doing some maintenance on the big 40 meter Yaggies this summer. So uh, we'll uh, keep you with stills and videos and uh, share as many tips as I can uh, for everybody out there. And of course, all of this material is available at DX Engineering. So if you're looking to build some antennas, uh, let's see here, we've got. Uh, uh, hello from Kilo 3 Charlie Whiskey Echo. Chuck, I like the new call. And uh, good afternoon from Alabama, Whiskey 4 Hotel Kilo Juliet. And Steve, November Alpha 5 Charlie says, what design did you use for the 40 meter Moxon you mentioned a couple episodes back? I'm rebuilding mine from a 40 uh, two element CD with strength improvements. Yet, yeah, uh, Steve, I used the design from W6 November Lima. And that design is uh, chronicled in the engineering section on k3lr.com. So just go to the website, click on engineering, and you'll see all the notes that uh, 
uh, Dr. Leeson W6NL created for the W6NL Moxon. And uh, from uh, Italy, it's India November 3 Uniform Fox Whiskey. And Arnie is on K5 Alpha Radio November. So thanks very much for watching today. I hope you had fun. If you have questions, you can always email me. And uh, I hope you're going to have a great weekend. The IOTA contest is uh, coming up. That'll be this weekend. So get on the air. Have some fun. We'll see you next Tuesday for Tuesday with Tim and Jeff. Until then, 73 from DX Engineering.